humans can't survive on Mars until these issues are solved. Here are the top problems humans will have to resolve. Let's take a look at Mars and Earth side by side to see the challenges you need to solve for you to survive. Radiation exposure's the first issue on our list. Solar radiation from the sun is something your skin won't miss. Earth has a strong magnetic field that deflects ultraviolet rays and a thick atmosphere that absorbs these rays so you can play. Mars has no magnetic field, so those rays get right in and its thin atmosphere doesn't block much radiation. Lack of oxygen's a major problem if you want to live on it. Mars has a tiny amount, but not enough enough for you to benefit. Earth has oxygen in which you all breathe to feed your cells. 21% of Earth's atmosphere is made up of it. How swell. Mars has barely any oxygen on it for you to breathe. There's only 0.16%. That's not close to what you need. Humans can't survive on Mars until these issues are solved. Here are the top problems humans will have to resolve. The extreme cold is something you should pay close attention to. You would freeze to death immediately on Mars, it's true. Earth's average temperature is 59 degrees Fahrenheit. That's warm enough to wear a t-shirt and feel that sunlight. Negative 81 degrees Fahrenheit's the average on Mars. That's cold enough to freeze your cells on the planet in the stars. Water scarcity is a huge problem if you need it to drink. On Mars, it's mostly made of ice, which is tough to pour through a sink. Dust storms and toxic soil are major problems here. Let's see the reasons why they hinder life to thrive all year. Dust storms hinder solar power and energy. Temperature health risks and impair visibility. Toxic soils make growing food really difficult. It can poison groundwater causing health risks as a result. Humans can't survive on Mars until these issues are solved. Here are the top problems humans will have to resolve. Let's take a look at Mars and Earth side by side to see the challenges you need to solve for you to survive.
24 by Atlas in the country of Chile. That means asteroid terrestrial impact last alert system you see. Have you heard my name before? I'm 2024 YR4, an asteroid that's classified as a Neo. Now let's go explore. As of February 19th and 2025, there's an update from NASA that me and Earth could collide. On the date of December 22nd, 2032, there's a 3.1% chance that I could collide with you. This is the highest percentage for an astronaut of this size, but there is also a much higher chance that I will pass by. Have you heard my name before? I'm 2024 YR4, an asteroid that's classified as a Neo. Now let's go explore. My diameter ranges between 130 and 300 feet. The higher size is above the height of the Statue of Liberty. If I did hit Earth by chance, it would devastate a big city, and my blast radius would be 30 miles around me. Have you heard my name before? I'm 2024 YR4, an asteroid that's classified as a Neo. Now let's go explore. In response to my threat, NASA's DART mission would help to alter my trajectory. Well, isn't that swell? But there remains a 96.9% chance that I will safely pass by Earth when I do advance. Have you heard my name before? I'm 2024 YR4. Asteroid that's classified as a Neo. Now let's go explore. Here's a glimpse into the early stages of planetary formation. My name is Tide. I won't be the youngest fearing question. Here's a glimpse into the early stages of planetary formation. Here's a look at this young world celestial information. My name is Ty Ty 1B. Three million years is my age, approximately. The youngest transiting exoplanet discovered today. Let's learn more about me. There's no longer we should wait. I'm about 10.7 times the radius of Earth you see. Nearly matching Jupiter's I spinning here so free. I have a T-Tori variable star. I orbit, it's true. I so 4125 plus 2902 I complete an orbit around my host star every 8.8 days 0.08 AU from my star they say Here's a glimpse into the early stages of planetary formation My name is Tide, I won't be the youngest fear in question Here's a glimpse into the early stages of planetary formation Here's a look at this young world celestial information My rapid formation challenges traditional models I hear Suggesting planets can form as little as 3 million years Identified using NASA's test By passing in front of my star, it's how you'd see me best I was discovered by the student Madison Barber when she saw In Chapel Hill in the University of North Carolina I have a misaligned outer disk that may have resulted from Interactions with planetary migrations Here's a glimpse into the early stages of planetary formation My name is Tide, I won't be the youngest fear in question Here's a glimpse into the early stages of planetary formation Here's a look at this young world celestial information Discovered using the JWST When pictures came back to Earth When scientists discovered me and I am the host star of this system You know AK-7 type orange dwarf star form 5.4 million years ago I'm considered a young star When compared to your son I am the center of the PDS-70 system This is the PDS-70 system I am two planets that have Break down the system and see what we can learn. I'm surrounded by a protoplanetary.
planetary disk With a large gap likely cleared by my planets as they whisk PDS-70B and PDS-70C are Two of my confirmed planets that orbit me PDS-70B was discovered in 2018 22 AU from its star, that is me PDS-70C was discovered in 2019 Located about 34 AU orbiting me on the scene This is the PDS-70 system I have to plan As a circumstellar disk surrounding it with an inner cavity sculpted by the planets I admit PDS-70C has something surrounding it This is what you would call a circumplanetary disk Both the circumstellar and circumplanetary disk Are possibly forming exomoons like Jupiter formed his Both planets are young gas giant protoplanets We can learn how planets formed by listening to scientists This is a PDS-70 system I have to plan Cotton candy and so light up a ball planet beyond your sky Floating soft like a dream so free the mystery of Wasp 193b Far beyond Neptune and Hydra's embrace A planet drifts in the vastness and darkness of space One thousand light years a cosmic ballet Wasp 193b the way they found it shining in 2023 through wasp self's keen eyed spree trappist test and speculus watched its transit with no excuse light like cotton candy and so light up a ball planet beyond your sky Floating soft like a dream, so free the mystery of Wasp 193b. This yellow white star that's larger than your sun, it's an F type star, that's some great information. I do orbit the star that goes by the name of Wasp 193. My name's almost the same. My star is located in the constellation Hydra. I'm a gas giant exoplanet, that's what we know so far. I am a giant in size and feather light. I'm less dense than air and a wondrous sight Scientists ponder as they scratch their heads How was this marshmallow planet that we discovered bred? Light like cotton candy and so light up a ball planet beyond your sky Floating soft like a dream so free the mystery of Wasp 193b I'm five times closer than Mercury to my star At 0676 AU, that's not too far I orbit my star once every 6.25 days Let's sing the chorus now and get on our way Light like cotton candy and so light up a ball planet beyond your sky Floating soft like a dream, so free the mystery of Wasp 193b. My name is K218b, let's learn some facts surrounding me. I could have life thriving freely, let's take a closer look and see. Kepler's K2 mission discovered me in 
in 2015 It saw dips in the brightness of a red dwarf star called K218 K2 campaign observed a patch of sky in the constellation Leo Using the transit method to discover me flying so free yo Every 33 days of light from the star would dim slightly This indicated something was passing in front of the star it was me My name is K218B let's learn some facts surrounding me I could have life thriving freely, let's take a closer look and see. Follow up observations by Spencer Space Telescope. Confirm the transit and measurements of the planet's orbit and size, you know. Hubble was used to study the planet's atmosphere so clear it detected water vapor in my planetary atmosphere. That made me the first habitable zone planet with such a detection. The James Webb brought it to the next level without objection. Webb saw the presence of methane and carbon dioxide and potential biosignature gas, demethyl sulfide. My name is K218B, let's learn some facts surrounding me. I could have life thriving freely, let's take a closer look and see. So why am I so special? You ask with a confused frown, let's take a look at why, as I go and break it down. One, first habitable zone exoplanet with water vapor. Two, carbon based molecules and maybe biosignatures. Three, a new class of potentially habitable world and planets for it challenges the earth centric view of life i admit number five a test case for the james webb space telescope when all these things are put together it gives life on other planets hope my name is k218b let's learn some facts surrounding me i could have life thriving freely let's take a closer look and see I'm a rogue planet, that's right, I have no star. My name is Simple 136, a loner so bizarre. I'm drifting through space, that's right, all alone. I have no solar system to call my home. I may be defined as a planet or a brown star. No one really knows, but I'll tell you what they know so far. Discovered in 2006 by Simp Survey, using the CPAPIR camera at this observatory. Located 20.3 light years away from Earth, found in the constellation Pisces, it's where I was birthed. My magnetic field is 200 times stronger than Jupiter's, it produces aura like emissions, they know that for sure. I don't belong to any solar system I'm just a rogue planet floating through space It's how I'm spun I'm a rogue planet That's right, I have no star My name is Simple 136 A loner so bizarre I'm drifting through space That's right, all alone I have no solar system to call my home I am a felt star known as a brown dwarf I'm too big to be a planet for what that is worth I'm too small to sustain hydrogen fusion like a true star And 12.7 times the mass of Jupiter as I drift afar Because I'm not quite a star and not quite a planet And I have no solar system, I'm a loner I admit I'm a rogue planet, that's right I have no star My name is Simple 136, a loner so bizarre I'm drifting through space, that's right, all alone. I have no solar system to call my home. <laughs>